Oh, ça va. Ok, donc. We should be live, bro. Hey, alright. What's up, everybody? Get the corner. Well, I. Huh. That's that same one. I haven't done anything with it yet. Well, why is it. I don't know what's going on, Randy. I'm a little confused. <laughs> Because <laughs> when I switched that scene, it did that. Why is the scene. Pull up the scene, if you would. <laughs> Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Edition <laughs> Through Distraction, your twice week weekly podcast featuring me, Johnny Q of Studio Johnny Q, and we also have Randy on the control who is Hello. helping me out right now. I think I may have just uh, fudged up one of our primary camera angles, so I'm going to go over here and uh, let me see here. You know, also, I haven't gotten the uh, notification of the stream yet. Oh, just came through. Randy's over there, I'm going to head on over there myself and uh, let's see. If I messed up that scene. I hope I did. All right, which which scene are you talking about, bro? Uh, What, what's it called? Which one? Corner right, Lodgy. <laughs> There you go. What happened here? All right, so let's see. Today's portrait is way On too top. big. So just delete it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. And you do the right click and... Uh, yeah, which one is that? All... Actually, we just delete it. We don't need uh -huh. that on there. All right. Yeah, just Oh, so here we can just... There you go. Yay! Thank you, Randy. <laughs> And again, welcome everybody to our live stream. Uh, we appreciate you guys showing up. Um, Wonder why that. Um... You remember sometimes when it, it when you access a new folder, it wants to supersize the huh. image. Yeah. I wonder if it had something to do like that, maybe. Or I may have been trying to do something on another scene and accidentally done it on that one. But God damn it, TV! Regardless, I'm sure it was my <laughs> fault. I don't know much, Rainy, but I know it's me <laughs> that done messed it up. All right, much. I think we are good now. I oh, can see all my screens and everything. So welcome. Uh, we appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, please, if you would, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Liking is when you hit the thumbs. Sharing is when you tell your mother, you tell your brother, and you also tell your secret lover and or lovers, um, depending on how many you have. And you uh, also can hit the subscribe button. And when you hit the subscribe button, it will bring up the bell icon. If you click that, then you'll get notifications when we post edited contents and when we're streaming. And also <laughs> it will make that bell ring, which means dive, dive, dive. I don't know if you knew that, Randy. Um, but it does. And um, remind everybody, all of our links down in the, in the description area to all of our, our goodies. So I think with that, Randy, I am ready to forge ahead uh, with today's show. How about you? Are you ready? Yeah, I to, believe so. Are you ready? Like, to, are you ready to sally forth? <laughs> you probably can't see this, but that picture frame I was playing with it, uh -huh. and it uh, well, you're moving stuff around now, but <laughs> inadvertently I had perfectly uh, <laughs> framed that little scene you got there with oh, the little castle and the I, uh, moving around. I, I was doing some um, some <laughs> clean up work, Randy, and I came across these, and this was a. Uh, <laughs> A birthday gift I'd gotten from a friend when I first kind of started getting back into Dungeons and Dragons and painting. And mm -hmm. it's this really cute little ceramic set. Those are cute. And uh, they were partially painted. We'd, we'd started to paint them on my birthday and I put them away. And uh, all the acrylic paints that it came with are all dried out and everything. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm going to pull these out. And so I just started to do a little bit of work on them. <laughs> they, what's neat is like like this here. Maybe it might be even better if I... Do the empathy on this one. I'm going to try to correct. Oh, you switched. Never mind. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, Randy, you like that? How I, it's got a manual focus right now. So, if something's out of focus on the M50, let me know. And I will manually focus it. Oh, okay. We're, we're giving that a go. But you can see here it has these indentations where it's like cut in. And so, I could use washes and stuff like that or, you know, to yeah, pull out some of that detail. Need to so, fix the, uh, sorry, my OCD's jumping at the, the red where it's touching the other part <laughs> on the top. You don't like that? It's bothering me. <laughs> no, that's the way it's designed. It hurts, it's it hurts me. Um, you, I don't know if you knew this. Those... The way that they used to uh, weatherproof the, the, the ceilings <laughs> were with blood. Oh, okay. And so that's just the blood of It'd the- It just dripped down. Yeah, that's just the blood Somebody of the- Somebody didn't use their straight edge on the- <laughs> Yep. No. Yeah, no, I, it, it's those early, come on, Randy, you've been hanging out in the studio. It gets ugly before it gets pretty. <laughs> And you don't, and that's a, that's a, a oh, thing. Oh, I'm not hating. I'm just saying it needs fixed. <laughs> well, I didn't feel like you were appreciating. <laughs> um, I like it. No. Uh, the, the thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Um, yeah, no, it's the sloppy, sloppy first coats. And then, you know, we'll, 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 we'll tie it in. Um, and also, I those are super cute though. You gotta watch your back. I might end up stealing the, uh, the wizard and the dragon. <laughs> yeah, these and are these are and maybe the castle too. <laughs> so it looks like this was Harang Group USA, possibly the knight. <laughs> lot, lot, lot two. Oops. I'm just saying, if you're left with a little girl by herself, it's don't look to me. <laughs> it's not the it's not the people that got to come save the princess. It's a princess that's gonna have to save the dragon, the wizard, <laughs> the castle, the knight. <laughs> are you gonna take the unicorn it's a horse? It's fairy tale. <laughs> are you taking the unicorn horse too, Randy? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't need the unicorn, but I think so. Yeah. But yep, so I was I was working on those. I think it's important to um when when you're trying to do the things that we're doing to still have fun with some of the stuff you're doing, right? You can't can't let all the all the all your creative stuff be work related stuff. There's gotta be some some stuff that's just for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna move these out of the way. I did uh work on Randy, remember we were talking about the the large scale uh, miniature that we were working on mm -hmm. yesterday so um we'll take a look at him i added his feet as well and i think we can uh try to glue in his um his head pieces one thing i did notice randy is that i have two tubes of this e6000 which is you know from what i understand the same thing as goop looks exactly the same um let me, i got another bottle of it here though this this is the first time that I've I've gotten this this size I think, and one of the things I really liked about it is that this nozzle in particular. Oh. <laughs> okay, mm. well, what's wrong? Just so you know, it looks like is this Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow has um, goop. <laughs> she yeah, has she's taken goop to be her own thing now. <laughs> uh, Randy, I'm going to tell you something, and you're not going to believe me. You're going to think I'm a parf. Oh yeah. It is my understanding. And I would like for you to, to validate this. That Gwyneth Paltrow made a fragrance that's called Smells Like My Vagina. <laughs> and I know that you think I'm a raging liar. And maybe I've suffered a stroke or something. But I'm pretty positive I saw that on the interwebs. Okay, I put in Smells Like My V as in Google to see. And then Gwyneth Paltrow come up? No, the first thing it comes, well, not yet. Let's see, the first thing it comes up is my urine smells like I've been eating asparagus. Oh, well. <laughs> That's because you were eating asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be worried unless you weren't eating asparagus. <laughs> Oh, I mean, no. if you're like, oh, no, these are not my good. urine smells like sweet and sour, <laughs> sour chicken. And I've never had problems. sweet and sour chicken. And... <laughs> oh, these poor people. Oh, no. Oh, that's frightening. OK. All right. Let me get rid of that search. So, so while, while you're doing, yes, please. While you're doing fact finding, Randy, if you can see the nozzle here. Uh huh. So the other one I have and I don't know where. Oh, here it is. I'll show you it. It is I don't not, know not, if I can spare a minute to look at a nozzle. Yes, I figure I, I figure you were the one. You're you're my Nas my Nas specialist. Uh, so we have this one here, right? But it's got a different, and I hate this uh, this way that this one works. Mm, man, Goopy is oh the the cap the cap is, is that you? yeah, yeah. cap stuck. Oh, those are pain in the butt. Yeah, and that's why I always keep some of these jar openers. Why are we getting? Man, you what? are getting an interesting echo going on. I'm sure it's mic bleed over, but hmm. I could try not to. Sure why? Uh, it might be. Um, you may try redirecting your mic a little bit. I'll do the same thing on yeah, mine. I turned it down. Let's see. I mean, I, mean, I just pointed it down. Oh, okay. there we go. Gotcha. I try to keep it pointed directly at like my chest so that it's not so that it limits how much it's uh, getting a view of it. Also, when I move around, I notice when I move around, we get echoes. Yeah, I think that's probably. So I was moving around a lot. Okay, so here you can see Randy. Yep. That looks familiar. So I'm going to guess, Randy, that you like the nozzle rather than the hole here. <laughs> um, you got to clean the tip. Dude. Well, you gotta, you gotta, that's, yeah, that's, that, that is good. Good you advice. You got to clean the tip. Keep it clean. <laughs> yeah, because nobody wants to touch that now. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. Okay. I'm going to fact check your yeah. Gwyneth info. <laughs> Yeah, because I, um, I did just do something potentially really horrifically slanderous, <laughs> and I think Gwyneth gets some heat already from some stuff. I don't know whether it's justified or not, <laughs> but uh, I think she can be a polarizing figure, is my understanding. I don't know that much about her, like personally or anything. But I don't know what I like her, but, but, but without I'm... knowing. Oh wait. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. I don't know if any of this is true or not, but it Well, it so does... we will say that we don't know if any of this is true. Yeah, I don't However, know if any of this is true. However, when you, when I Google Gwyneth Paltrow fragrance, one of the first results that come up is from Harper's Bazaar Beauty Fragrance and uh, it says Gwyneth Paltrow has released a vagina candle naturally. That's Gwyneth what it was. Paltrow it was a has made a strong business out of her vagina. <laughs> Sexy and beautifully unexpected scent. <laughs> Geranium, citrusy, bergamot. <laughs> That's just from the search result. Little, yeah, uh, I, you snippet. know, you know what I've always wanted, Randy, and I've never been able a to find it. A vagina candle? No, actually, not 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 quite exactly, but but similar. It's it, it's it. They overlap in the Venn diagram. Um, you know, I, I used to have an ex-wife that used to that used to do sell candles, right? And uh -huh. so I've seen a ton of candle flavors. Uh, flavors? Party light, I think. Was I never seen? Jimmy, that was. You're not supposed to eat them. I, That's I why she never succeeded in the business. I don't, I don't think I ever candles. saw the, fergun, the fecundity uh, <laughs> flavor, and that was for fecundity uh, <laughs> scented one. Mm, you know what that smells like? <laughs> fecundity? <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. So, yeah, so at least I wasn't totally <laughs> off. I mean, I, did, I, I didn't create that, uh, that, that, that uh, story. It's in Harper's Bazaar, so you can check it and fact find it for yourself. So, yeah, I was rather, I was rather shocked that... Uh, and I think that because they had one candle and it works so well that they, yeah, it's like this one smells like mine or something. And it was just like, what? That's just, uh, we live in a wild, wacky world, Randy. <laughs> it is wild and wacky. So, yeah, we talked about our E6000. One of the things, though, when I was talking about the nozzle, obviously, it's a lot easier to apply uh, with the nozzle tip. So I think from now on, whenever I buy this. I did hear, I think it was. Sorry, I just remembered something. I think it was Gwyneth Paltrow that was selling something that was supposed to be like an anti-stress spray hmm. that you can spray in your face or something. Did it also smell like... I think it was just... I mean, basically, it's distilled water. But you're starting like some ridiculous amount per bottle. And people were just lapping it up. Yeah, she has a she has a bathroom spray. <laughs> it's called Smells Like My Butthole. <laughs> <laughs> And it doesn't do anything, you know. It's like, wow, it smells just. When like it me. smells just like me. <laughs> it's amazing. You, you, yeah, it's, I I smell like Gwyneth. That's oh, that's, man, awesome. that's awesome. That's <laughs> really. <laughs> so thank thank you, GP, for uh, oh. that little moment of brevity in our lives today. We do appreciate you for uh, being bold enough to uh, to want to do something like that. That is the... uh, also there is uh, this is. Can you see this picture? This is the amazing goop. Oh, okay. Out the household contact adhesive amazing goop. Okay. However, when you say goop, what I think of is mm, a cleaner. Let's see if I can find that part. Yeah. Oh, hand cleaner, yeah. You, you were mentioning that, right? On, like uh, a hand cleaner? Yep. You yeah. can also use it on um, laundry to take out stains. Oh, things. okay. Yeah. Like a, a like a workshop kind stain of cleaner, right? Stain remover. Like a workshop kind of hand cleaner. Yeah. It's like a waterless um, yeah, I like those. hand cleaner. Those are nice. I haven't I haven't used one of those in a long time. I'd really <laughs> those are good for getting like grease out of your hands and mm -hmm. grime. I can't remember some of the ones that we used substance. to use. It's it kind of almost seems like a grease in a way, a little bit like just like a weird weird type of soap. Whoopsies! Sorry for the sudden. All right. So, because I'm looking at a smaller picture than what people are actually able to view this when they're watching YouTube potentially. Uh -huh. So I don't know how well I'm going to be able to tell if it is definitely within. Okay. That looks like it's in focus to me. Yeah. If you try to get closer to do a um, close up of it. Yeah. See, that's definitely not in focus. Yep. And let me see if I can. There you go. And then, yeah, bring it into focus a little bit more. There you go, right there. Yeah, some of that I can just pull back a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. So there you go. So well, we had added, on the last uh, stream, we had added his arms. And you could see that that was the that arm cleavage I was telling you about, Randy. And we'll use some two-part epoxy to patch that. Is that like massive head wound hairy? What's going on there? Yeah, I, I, it's, I, uh, I don't, you know, I, I don't normally think of the bicep when you say hatchet wound, but... <laughs> It looks like his head. No, the, on the top there is what the one I'm talking about. Oh, his head? Well, his head's missing pieces. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, because if, again, this is the, this is the box. Oh, it's where the, okay. Yeah, that's where the horns go. So he's got horns, and he's also got a face piece that's missing. There's a socket mm -hmm. here that's, you can see, kind of looks like a robot. Yeah. 
But um, I remember the, the the arm last time it wasn't sitting great, and but then I, I just, had to go ahead and I was like, you know, more is always better, right? Yeah. And it actually did work. More was better. Cool. So I just got a, a nice uh, storyline for you. Okay. Involving that. And then so yeah, then I also added the legs. So I'm going to work on um, quickly while we're discussing next points, just letting everybody know what I'll be working on is I'm going to be gooping up some of these holes and or dry fitting uh, some of these pieces that we have over here. And uh, you're, be working you're on that while you're. Figures, and then Randy, also uh, one of the things that we'll probably be revisiting is this was our gelatinous cube, mm -hmm. and so I'd like to do some more on it. So, but so far, it's it's a whole hell of a lot better than the bullion cube that we had <laughs> started that I that I have. So, anyways, that'll be what I'll be working on while you are conducting uh, business. Yeah. Uh, there was so, one thing I wanted to... Oh, you said you had a storyline. Yeah, for the for the storyline. I hope yep, there's your... Uh, me and one second. I'm going to switch here for to you. the corner cam. All right. All right. Annoying. Um, storyline. Yeah, you're going to need two of those figures because you're going to have one of them be the real thing. Uh -huh. And then one of them will be like, there's a game master type figure that is... Uh, put the I, this is actually a larger theme that i that i'd had i have a lot of little pieces to add to it but uh if you got a game master type figure that has uh tricked kind of a trickster type character so um mm. he has tricked the uh the group into this uh into his lair basically and he's got all these different situations that he leads them through so each room is a different kind of puzzly uh play on reality and and different things that can happen here so uh you'll encounter that figure in that setting except you end up finding out that it's really just a mechanoid version of it so hmm. you can leave it where his horns and face can come off and you see oh wait this is a robot that would be cool i actually <laughs> I, yeah i really like that that is neat yeah it's like the face comes off like the classic uh west world <laughs> sort of thing where you find out that you know we love robot talk here at studio johnny q <laughs> And you realize that Yule Brenner is a real robot. And if you figure out how to add LEDs, because well, everything comes back to putting LEDs and things. Yes, <laughs> well, because LEDs, yeah, makes everything. <laughs> or in, in a laser pointer, that'd be cool. Like laser pointer, <laughs> yeah. If you got a laser shooting out his eye hole. <laughs> so, Randy, there's something that I want I want to talk to you about. I think it's probably at the top of the show notes. If if uh, if we can progress to the next item. Oh, let me get the show notes up and running. I do. I do really like that idea. That is a neat idea, Randy. <laughs> I, have, I will. I will. I think that seed will be planted and will probably end up expressing itself in a, a future model. Um, that was one of my idea. The the game, the um, the game master type figure, was uh, one of my ideas for having a lot of elements that you could add in um, to allow people to do things that you might not want them to have uh like for overpowered um abilities or certain things that you'd want them to be able to do just for that episode kind of thing or just in a room particular mm -hmm. uh possibly as opposed to having that ability the whole time so it gave you that room to play with adding those different elements in that's cool i was talking to chris and he was uh talking about wanting to do like a superhero themed uh you know and there's been further down in time you know marvel and dc both have had role-playing games in existence for at least the 80s right mm -hmm. um and so he's wanting to do like a superhero type game but he said he wanted to base it on like uh, the fantastic four and i'm imagining you probably don't have much knowledge of the fantastic four as far as like the comics go right no not the comics and um i don't really have a ton either um i'm starting to get a little bit more as i'm starting to read some more comics um some i'm reading some old graphic novels and things um I really like the digital comicsology app, uh, but I also support the local comic book store too and gra grab stuff from there. Um, but they, um, the Fantastic Four are actually, it's, it's really funny because, you know, we think about the Marvel Universe, right? And there's people who don't even realize that the Fantastic Four are part of the Marvel Universe and that, uh, you know, the X-Men are, are part of the Marvel Universe now because of the way that the movies have been, right? Mm-hmm. And but I guess uh, the Fantastic Four, you know, like Reed Richards is Mr. Fantastic. He's the guy that stretches. Yeah. And he um, he's like 
regarded as like one of the smartest people in the Marvel universe. Right. Mm -hmm. And he is often involved. I think he's probably part of the Illuminati. There's an Illuminati in the Marvel universe. Okay. And it's, it's the black Panther. It's Prince Namor. Who's like, like Marvel's version of Aquaman sort of. Uh, so the Illuminati is actually a good thing in the Marvel universe. They are. Well, I guess you could make your own decisions, but they're not They're. I don't think there's villains that are in it. Uh, I'm wondering Dr. Doom might be in it. It might, they might have somebody. Oh, so that, it's both. So it's, it might be. I can't remember. Um, let's see. Computer. Who is in Marvel's Illuminati? Here's something I found on Wikipedia. It won't be, right? The Illuminati are a <laughs> fictional group of superheroes appearing what? in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. Fictional. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's like, it, it's, I think it's like Doctor Strange. It's probably Doctor Strange, Reed Richards, Captain America, Black Panther, Prince Namor. I think there's one or two other. Um, but they can kind of, sometimes they meet to try to, I think they met there was an they met like at the beginning of secret wars and but anyways there's uh I think in the the Baxter building Iron Man Mr. Fantastic Namor Prince Namor with that. yeah that's a... um oh, okay uh Black Bolt Doctor Doom and Black Magneto Bolt. Magneto okay and who was the other one uh, Doctor said... Doom Black Bolt Doctor Doom okay so yeah so Doctor Doom is is uh that's Fantastic Four's classic arch nemesis with the metal face dr doom and um yeah, yeah. and then some yeah and he's he's features a lot in the stuff because he's like in the secret wars the multiverses are collapsing and and he's the one that kind of saves it hmm. but his the way that he saves it isn't awesome and people then i think feel like they need to overthrow him or something but um, so yeah, but oh, anyway, so the Baxter building, right? For the Fantastic uh -huh. Four, but the Baxter building, I think it has like access to all kinds of like crazy, like portals and kinds of stuff. So he's like, the Baxter building itself is an infinite source of like adventure. And I was like, yeah, I could see that. Hmm. That's cool. Cause hey, I think Chris. too, like, What's I up, think buddy? the Baxter building may have, who, did somebody join? Chris. Oh, hey Chris. Thanks for joining. So he loves this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And let me know if I, uh. If I if I, I got the, the thought wrong because we were just talking about the outside, but I think that's what he was alluding to was that um, it was because there's so much stuff that you could you know have access. I think that one of the prisons in the Marvel universe, there's like I think there's supposed to be like well at least in different versions of it. One of the versions I've seen there's especially I'm probably thinking about the animated Avengers. There's four. Um, prisons and i think one of them is a space prison that you access through the baxter building but hmm. i'm not 100 percent on that but it is it is a really neat idea because it would be an infinite source of of adventure for certain um and then the other thing that i wanted to mention to you was that we were supposed to have a guest visitor today oh yeah yeah shay was going to come we had D, &D last night and she was going to come and the reason that she was going to come she's like what is this about John going to be on the stream Sunday? I'm like, well, John's supposed to be on the stream. She was like, before me, I needed to be the first. You've been talking that I was probably going to be the first. Well, yeah. She's like, well, I need to be the first. So she was going to try to come in today. So, uh, but she's, she said that she will be in, uh, she couldn't get today off last minute notice, but she can uh, be in next Tuesday. So I think she's actually going to come in next Tuesday. Oh, that's cool. So the, I, 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 I told her that I won't stream my session with John. I might record it or something, but, you know, we won't we won't stream it so she can be the first stream guest. Since it's <laughs> it's that important to her, then it's that important to me. <laughs> so I appreciate that. But it was funny. She was uh she was adamant. She was adamant. <laughs> Got her all riled up. Yeah, I didn't realize that I was touched that she cared so strongly. Um uh, so Randy, looks like I've got oh, oh here you go, JB. The Baxter building is also where the portal to the negative zone prison is located. Yeah, the negative zone. Okay. Yeah, and it's like a planer. It's like an uh, I think an alternate plane prison. I think. Negative zone. Nega zone. Don't they say nega zone at some point or something? I think in one of the cartoons. I know they say sometimes they say nega please. They refer to it as nega zone or something. Oh, I was thinking in the cartoon that I saw with it. 
I thought it had to do with um, like Ant Man. The cartoon, at yeah, some point it, they, yeah, because he, he has a a shrunk in the, yeah, he has a shrunk version of it. Yeah, because I made you watch some of those, I think, or maybe you watched them on your own as well afterwards. But I think you came over one day and was watching them with me. Yeah, we watched some, and then there were a couple other ones that uh that I watched. I don't know. It's been a long time. I don't remember. But what yeah, because Ant Man and that and that uh, the animated Avengers series, which is actually on Disney Plus now, so I, I just started watching it again. Hmm. Um. It's, it was pretty good. I like how how it stays kind of true to that Silver Age theme. Like Modok looks like Modok, and Scroll looks like Scroll, and Nemo looks like Nemo. Like classic, you know, depictions. And um, it's like I can't remember who the guys that look like they're in the the yellow. Is that AIM? Maybe A I M, but they, they're in these like, like yellow hazmat suits, and yeah, they. You know, they just depict them as they are, they are and it, it works. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and, and he hey, has... wait a minute, American <laughs> Instant Messenger, what? <laughs> or that was called AIM. <laughs> oh, the Instant Press. AOL's yeah. Yellow Running Man. <laughs> Maybe I wonder if that was a reference to. <laughs> so I don't know so where this guy's. At. I am confused. <laughs> AIM is Advanced Idea Mechanics. Oh, okay. And what does Mo Mordok, st Modok stand for? M O D O K. Oh, okay. Mental, mobile, mechanized organism designed only for killing. I think I have a model of him around here. Hold on one second, Randy. I found this, I think, at the $5 store. I keep wanting to paint him up. <laughs> he is. He's the guy that floats in the chair, though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's got like a big head and he floats in the chair. And they just yeah. a straight up depiction of him. Right here. All right, so I'm going to try to go ahead and, I think, glue his face pieces in. I wonder if there's a way for me to quickly share this stuff using a link to actually get the image to show, just from... Say what now? I said I wonder if there's a way to get, to quickly show this stuff in the feed. Uh, um, just by using a link. Like yeah, I think if you copy and paste a link into the into the the chat. No, I mean to actually get the picture to show in the feed in the in the live Oh, stream. you could save it and do it, but then I think you can do a link. I think you can link yeah, to a URL if you yeah. add a source. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, and feel free to test that on one of the other scenes or something if you wish. All right, so I'm gonna try to I think on this him, I think I'm gonna go for. Um, as I'm working on his mouthpieces here. Did you just? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So sorry. Yeah. All right. I'm on. I'm on studio now. So. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna work on adding his mouth here, and it looks like the way that he's depicted. It's looking at the box art that he's got a helmet on. So I was like looking for eyes and stuff, but I'm never gonna yeah, find. Yeah. Here, those. let me show you this picture. I want to show. You. Oops. Well. If yeah. Windows will cooperate. That's a cool one, man. <laughs> Usually, he kind of has a more. I don't know, like baby face. Oh, uh, like this one here is weird. Can you see that over here? Yeah, more like that. That one looks even odder. That one's. Oops. But. Oh. oh. All right, here. Let me go ahead Good and Lord. get this together. They really. DigitalSpy.com. They really need this big of a cookies notification. <sighs> it's really funny with, with these cookie board. things. They They had to do that for legal reasons. And the thing is, is I, I think they can't make you accept the cookies. So what they do is they just make it inconvenient. So it never fully obscures the screen and you can always get out of it if you want to, but they don't make it clear. It's kind of funny. I'm pretty certain that's what's happening with that. <laughs> but like we say, do your own fact finding. Here's the one I'm used to seeing from the 
I think this is probably, yeah, this must be from the cartoon that I saw. Let's see. What you doing, JB? I am putting the helmeted head on this creature. You said helmet and head in the same sentence. Yep, I did. Here, look. This is the one I'm used to seeing, I think. Yeah, more like that. Definitely more like that. That's a, a, that's a more uh, more prominent depiction. And there's your yellow hazmat suit guys in the back yeah yeah and with the way that they you know that they flare up to the top right <laughs> that's uh but they make it work they definitely make it work okay they work it and then i don't want to put the horns on because hey, then i'll end up knocking these pieces off what'd you say shay just joined oh hey shay what's up girl we were talking about you that we're looking forward to you coming in next week and that we are not going to do a stream with John on Sunday. We will, he'll come and I'll record it, but we won't stream it so that you will have the opportunity to be first. <laughs> All right. So with that, Randy, we've got him drying, I think. Um, and then I'm going to paint this up a little bit. What? Move this. Oh. <clears throat> Randy, I also mm -hmm. now that Shay is here, mm -hmm. uh, she s said that she had uh, came. She, you know, she I think was on the last stream during her lunch, but then she listened to the rest of it later, mm -hmm. and she said, "And I, you're lucky I wasn't on for the animals being sentient conversation." <laughs> so she is definitely on uh, pro animal being sentient side. Um, we discussed it a little bit last night, but I thought that she might find it interesting that she was definitely, <laughs> she was definitely pro. <laughs> pro animal and she's like so like i would have lit up your chat so i'm probably imagining she has a sternly messaged uh shay said uh <laughs> so after you said what she missed and you talked about oh yeah uh, uh -huh. do you see being on the stream uh she said better not lol i need this <laughs> and she said and then chris said talked about all the loots i'm gonna take all your loots i'm gonna take <laughs> p.s here first <laughs> <laughs> so I said, ha, 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 ha. Well, that's funny. Yeah, we had, had another good D and D session last night. Posted nice. some pictures on the Instagram. If you're not following us on the Instagram, so we got our links down in the description. All right, Randy. When we were talking about this guy here, um, you know, we, we we I think we had toyed around maybe with doing something opalescent on him t as well. Sorry. I with think what? that we had talked about maybe trying to do something opalescent on this mm. this slime. I don't know that I have opalescence, but I do have this metal medium. And well, I was still thinking, needs to be, you're going to have to be careful with the opacity of, of any opalescent stuff, potentially. Well, that's what these things are. I mean, these things are clear and all okay. they have. Like, so I have this metal medium. Yeah. And I was thinking about maybe trying to mix it in with a little bit of, of uh, like green here and just seeing what we get. I want to test it before you put it on there. No. <laughs> Fortune favors the bold, Randy. I'm living on the edge. Should because in theory, yeah, it should be just a clear media, a clear base. Yeah. With uh, with I'll, I'll start in a inconspicuous area. Yeah. Like they say when you're cleaning carpets, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Randy. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> All right. You doing a lot of carpet cleaning in your days, Randy? Uh. <laughs> More not than as, I not would, as much more, as one might think. More than I would like to admit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's see. All right, here. Let's see. I got a little heavy on the on the metal medium, Randy. A little heavy-handed, did yeah, you? A little heavy-handed here. Uh, and with this goop here, I'm going to end up putting my hand in it. So let me our back here. Can I do a swoopy swappy, Randy? Uh, da, 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 da. There you go. 
I'm just gonna put it on the long swap. Well, right. I won't do the long swap. Yep. Uh, Let me know when you're done. Okay. 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 Back on studio. You're back in studio mode. Yep. Okay. So I just got it on the studio trying mode for right now, and I'm trying to. Uh, here we got our just some green ink, and then our our Vallejo metal medium, and I'm gonna try to see if it'll give us kind of like a shimmery green. Yeah, this is gonna give some shimmer. I want to add more ink. All right, let's see what we got here. Especially, it's all yellow on the top, so let's put some in. What are you trying to do there? I'm adding some green in with some shimmer. I'm trying to get some shimmer on this, man. Found and determined. I like that. I like the amount of opacity that we have on this. Mm -hmm. It just still needs a little bit more character. So I'm trying to figure out how the best way to do this. On the um, like, if I would do a ghost character that's translucent, yeah. Uh, what I'll I'll tend to do is something like this. You know, where I'll put an ink on, but then I'll also frost it. I'll do a dry brush with white that kind of frosts the tips, and that works really good with ghosts. But I don't think it's going to work good with this. So I'm trying to kind of. You don't think a gelatinous mass would be big in having frosted tips? Well, of all the gelatinous masses that I've met, <laughs> I've never seen any of them request frosted tips. <laughs> and I don't think I'm going to do this all, all with it, but just another way of contrast, right? Because there's lots of ways to get contrast. There's, you get contrast through light and darkness. You can get it through warm and cold colors, you can get it through textures, you can get it through finishes, so gloss versus a matte. So there's a lot of ways to get contrast. All right, let's see here. All right, we got that. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, and then also I'll probably, if I wanted to maybe potentially paint some of those spell effects that we showed on the show the other day, like the spiritual weapon and the stuff like that, and enhance those. Chris said, uh, are you forgetting Nike on Fridays? Am I forgetting Nikes on Fridays? What's that? Uh, is that a reference to frosted tips? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is fair. Thank you. <laughs> I was not connecting the dots. Yes. Yeah, perhaps I have. Well, they didn't request them. They maybe came in with them. <laughs> hey, now you're a rock star. Get your game on. Go play. <laughs> Um, let me take a look too, Randy. Uh, there was I wanted to talk about some upcoming uh, shows, Randy, that are on the horizon. Okay. Um, you had just we, we had just gotten started, and we have to pick it back up again. Um, getting you on the the Game of Thrones train. Oh yeah, because you I don't saw have the HBO. first season. Yeah, and um, the people who did those the show guys the main show guys like at the end of the episodes they have these dudes that talk uh -huh. there's two of them in particular that are you know pretty important i'm not sure if they were executive producers or writers or yeah exactly but um i think they're executive producers they um they're doing another series for amazon uh -huh. that is lord of the rings universe huh i think it's are you That's familiar with the, the cimmerillion I, I have heard of it and it's what does well Computer. It's a lot of information he compiled in yeah. order to create the what he did, but it's also kind of a, a background. Uh, I think so. Of, yeah, I think old... that it's it's just a larger history, yeah. and I think most of it, if not all of it, does take place probably before. Okay, that's that's pretty much all I know. About yeah, it. and that's pretty much what I know of it as well. Um, so I don't think that any of the characters that you know we know and love would probably be in it. I want to say something. Somebody there's a, like a reference to Knights of Numenor or something within it. I think. Or, okay. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's several stories. So okay. like, there's the one story that Aragorn tells when um, they're sitting by the campfire, and I think Frodo may ask him about his necklace or something like that. 
and he talks or no he's asking her the song that he's singing he's singing the song and the song is about an elf who gives her heart to a mortal man hmm. and i think like that might be in it that that story or you know or things from that time period okay but anyways it seems pretty exciting because those guys did a wonderful job on the game of thrones stuff and um i'm pretty stoked to see what they could do in a um in a lord of the rings universe so i have heard something about galadriel like how galadriel came to be and like but i don't remember where i heard that from i don't know if that's part of the similarian or whatever or if it was something else all right so that's that so we are done i think with that guy for the moment so let me uh yeah so i think that's going to be really cool and then also um there was another one that's coming out um give me one second maybe i have to log into my phone to pull up my notes here uno momento por favor uh, Randy, can we switch to a different camera angle if it would be possible? I'm not finding what I'm looking for there, by the way. Okay. Um, there's other interesting options, but uh, there's potential issues with those that we're going to have to work around. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, okay. Off studio. All right. Thank you. No, we'll go ahead and do a long swap, I think, on that. Um, on the show notes. One second. Took a picture. 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 Fighting with my phone right now, Randy. I hate that. There we go. So we talked about we got the mm -hmm. Roblox videos. We got the guest cast, Grando. Oh, the Dragon Egg. Yep. So let's go ahead and pull out our Dragon Egg and do another set of scales for him. And then yeah, and then the spell effects. I think that. Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, also. Um, Randy, why, what, yeah, the upcoming shows. If you could take a look in the, the show notes under what we're watching, it'll have some information there. But uh, there's also another um, show. And Chris, maybe you've seen some of this. Um, any of the, the, uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earths on the CW. Have you actually checked out any of that or not? I have it. Sorry, it, what was it? There's a there was a a big thing in the '80s, um, a multiple title storyline I think affecting the entire DC universe. It was multiple. It was called Crisis on Infinite Earths, and the idea was that you know you had Earth, you know, 301 and Earth 502 because you mm -hmm. had all these different storylines and you had these characters that existed at different ages during different times. Yeah. And so this was a way to combine it into one cohesive universe. And so it was Crisis on Infinite Earths that caused that to happen. And there's been different iterations of it since then. But it seems that uh, with the the Green Lantern CW on on the CW, right? And I guess maybe because of the, some of the other properties, the CW uh, DC properties, they they I guess are doing like a Crisis on Infinite Earths, and and so it, I, I'm I'm not really certain about it, but I wish that it was on something other than CW. <laughs> Chris said not. He's waiting for it to finish the watch. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's I, it seems pretty grand in its scale. So kudos for them on that. Because it keeps popping up on my my internet radar, like you know, the Green Lantern is metamorphosizing into another character, or you know, this this that's the other thing. I was like, oh, this is this guy's you know, it's an alternate Earth version of Superman or Batman or you know something. And uh, so it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. But then it's like, but it's still a CW. <laughs> and that, that stuff just for me at this point, it just. So yeah, there. It well, feels it CW feels... is where um, Supernatural and Arrow were, wasn't it? Yeah. And they're both ending or have ended already. Yeah, and so like yeah, uh, and so the, and so the characters from the Green Lantern universe that they established are part of this. Um. And. Way. and so yeah like i said i keep seeing these little things that pop up and it's like oh like i think they actually there was a movie that had uh where lex luther was played by the guy from the facebook movie nope it wasn't that one i lied that because that was the recent lex luther 
The one before that, the guy that's in uh, House of Cards. Who's the actor? Oh, Superman Returns. That The guy that played... Um, oh, are you talking Super- about one of the old? Superman? Yeah, one of the older Supermans. Superman Returns. It was like after they had done the Chris Reeve Superman, I think he was the first Superman in a movie since then. But it was before the Man of Steel. And... Um, I think he's that version of Superman. That actor is playing, I think, Superman in this Crisis of Infinite Earths, which is kind of kind of neat. All right, so we got to get some more of our scales. Well, actually, before we do that, we can go ahead and remove our pens, I guess. Why is this not playing, Kevin Spacey? Kevin Spacey, thank you. Randy. Uh-huh. I do not fear the devil, but I do fear Kaiser Soze. <laughs> That's all you get. <laughs> um, so, what do we do? Chris said Superman Returns, Kevin Spacey, and Brandon Roth. Brandon Roth, is that who the that actor is? And it's funny because he also played... He's funny. And one of like, the, C, the, the CW kind of universe, there's a... Yeah, he's kind of like um like Ant Man. Yeah, he plays Ant Man so. in that. Yeah, or so. is he Ant Man? He doesn't. He, yeah. he just gets small. I don't think he com- he doesn't command ins- insects or anything. Um, well, because he's not Ant Man. Because yeah, Ant Man is Marvel. Ant-Man. It's like Adam. The Adam. The I mean. Adam. Yeah. yeah. And, And we make these things ugly first, and then we work on making them pretty. Hmm. I'm definite that the next time. Pretty. Look at this picture of Brandon Roth. (laughs) It's pretty. He's oh so pretty. (laughs) I I enjoy him in in his roles. Me too. So let's see. Okay, so it looks like I don't know how to pronounce this properly. Summer uh, Summerillion is that it? Silma Rillion. Summerillion. Summerillion. I think is how it's pronounced. Yeah, Summerillion. Um, more or less. <laughs> it looks like he originally intended it as a sequel, and he died during it, right? But it was and his son, his son finished it. Um. I believe I've heard that before. I don't see it in this quite yet. But it was rejected as being obscure and too Celtic. Uh, so he began work on a long expected party. The first chapter, what he described at the time, as a new story about hobbits, which later became Lord of the Rings. Um, com- so he wrote the Cimmerillion before? Five parts. Okay, five parts in the Cimmerillion. The first part tells the creation of Ia, the world that is. Valaquenta, the second part, gives a description of the Valar and Mayar. Hmm. I don't know how to pronounce any of these things. Uh, supernatural powers in Ia. The second section, or the next section, uh, Quinta Silmarillion, which forms the bulk of the collection, chronicles the history of the events before and during the First Age, including the wars over the Cimmerillus that gave the book its title. The fourth part, Randy Akalabeth. Uh, yeah. Art, what is wrong with the view on that's on the screen right now? It's like it seems like it's it's rotated. Yeah. How did they get rotated? I. JB. That is my. What have you done? <laughs> Hold on a second. I don't know what it is, but I'm certain <laughs> it was my fault, as we have established previously. <laughs> Uh, release the history of the downfall of Numenor and its people Numenor uh, which takes place in the second age the final part of Lord of not the Lord of the rings of power and the third age brief account of the circumstances which led to and were presented in the Lord of the Rings five yeah. parts were initially separate works so that would be interesting right so if it, I mean it, hell just dealing with like the rings of power right as a as a back kind of story the final part what's that 
the final part? No, yeah. I mean, even before, because the rings of power are, I mean, it's Sauron's ring. He created that one last, right? He created that one to rule them all. So the ones that he gave to the elves, the ones or the ones for the elves, the ones for the dwarves, and the ones for the humans, you could have all the stories that deal with those even before the one ring was even created. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. That's right. I am bending our scales that we had previously cut out of XPS foam. Let me go ahead and try to do a... Huh. <laughs> and I'm just giving a pre-bend here. Uh, it says that the five parts were initially separ uh, separate works, but it was the Elder Tolkien's express wish that they were published together. Because he died before he finished revising the various legends, Christopher gathered material for his father's older writings to fill out the book. And in a few cases, this meant that he had to devise completely new material, though within the tenor of his father's thought, in order to revolve gap, or resolve gaps and inconsistencies in the narrative. Hmm. That'd be a challenge. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm gonna get the bar. Oh, uh, apparently my phone doesn't want to play the audio for the video because of something that happened during the phone call. Nice. Your phone doesn't want to give you this, the audio from the stream? Is yeah, it stopped, it stopped playing the live stream the because, call? It, I don't know, for some reason they didn't like what happened when it got a phone call. Yep. Hmm. All righty. Be that way. What are you working on, JB? I am adding some scales to these eggs. So I'm adding another line. I put, I did kind of some dry fits. I, I folded them here so that they'll sit prettier. And I'm gonna let me see how I did so these place some glue. And so I'm gonna put them in here and pin them down. Yeah, this is not how we're going to do this in the future. I do look forward to doing this again. This is a learning experience, mm -hmm. but this will not be how we will do them in the future. <laughs> I'm thinking, Randy, maybe what we do is to just roll out a sheet of like some sort of craft foam or something like that, texture it, and then use like a, 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 a an oval teardrop shaped cutter and, and cut those out and apply those to a, a plastic egg. Mm -hmm. And then we could do it all in one sitting. But since I've started this, I'm committed to trying to. Yeah, it'll be good to show different it. ways. Yeah. And also, this could be an interesting thing that potentially we could uh, do a 3D scan of. Parf has ways and means to do some 3D scans mm -hmm. on some things, so it'd be kind of neat. To... So it might just have to be a one-off, right? So it could help justify some of the extra effort. All right, so now that I, I've got these glued and pinned here, Randy, I want to just put some glue on the undersides of these and then pin that, those sides in as well. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that the Cimmerillion, it seems like it, it's it's a pretty target-rich environment for some, some, some good stories, right? <laughs> and I'm actually started listening. Yeah. Sorry, I just saw, I was looking back to, uh, I finally got back to the uh, MODOK sure. picture, oh, yeah, trying yeah. to get that up, and I saw... In the search results, Modoc Trump. <laughs> <laughs> There's some uh, some nice pictures. <laughs> yep, I bet. Modoc Trump. <laughs> yeah, I know. I bet there is. That's funny. <laughs> you know who I always thought? Uh, can you pull up the classic version of um, Octopus? Hold on. Hold of Doc on. Ock? I'm trying to show this to you. Okay. There's one. There's uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, and let's see, where's the other one? <laughs> this is a good one. Oh no. Yeah, so I'm assuming people can just basically, uh, they could Google. Yeah. Trump Modoc, M O D O K. Yeah, this just came up uh, as, <laughs> as a Google thought. response to uh, All right. Trump Modoc. So again, Modoc Trump. looking ugly, but I guarantee it's going to look a lot better than this when it's all said and done. Have faith. <laughs> oh.
Yeah, so there was a Cimmerland, and it, and and the notes also, I think, Wheel of Time that they might be making a series about it as well. There you go. There's another one. Oh my, that is awesome, man. That is. <laughs> it's amazing what digital art, like what we can do, <laughs> how quickly we could do it. <laughs> That's oh, hilarious. is this? Wait, is this series? He's an actual character. First appearance, Spider Gwen Annual, 2016, number one. No. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's funny regardless. <laughs> it does, yes. <laughs> Likewise. All right. I'm going to continue here on the next egg. Let me know when you get a chance to get back to the show notes. Mm -hmm. I need to get a couple more scales for our egg. I have them over here. There's a box of them. Oh, by the way, yesterday was uh, Answer Your Cat's Questions Day, in case you didn't know. Hmm. So I, I hope you answered, took some time to answer all of your cat's questions. Well, and I'm imagining we do that to help uh, cats not be as curious. Because curiosity kills cats? Is that what we're trying I, to that say? That would be the uh, humanitarian thing to do. Uh, well, uh, Rainy, this brings up something. So, because everything always brings up something. Um, with, you know, we are fond of wordplay and origin of words and such, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting twist of phrases. So, there's a lot of common phrases that we only know part of, right? And when yeah. you know the whole thing, it actually kind of changes the meaning. Okay. So, curiosity killed the cat. Satisfaction brought him back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you always just say curiosity killed the cat, you're saying curiosity is a bad thing. Are you saying that this is an actual? Full I believe so. Yeah, I believe that is the actual. And the other one that's similar to that, Randy, is, you know, that being a jack of all trades. That is, sounds like that sounds like a, a, a music lyric or something. that Somebody created that. Yeah. And it could be. I mean, it was something <laughs> I was taught. You know, I don't I didn't. Oh, really? I didn't. Oh. It, was, it was something that I think that my elders taught me. So, huh. Um, what is yeah. the message there? That's interesting. Yeah, it is. What? <laughs> and here's the other. Here's another one that I thought of very similar, is um, jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. The rest of that is often better than a master of one. <laughs> totally changes the context of what people, how people quote it. So it's actually celebrating being a jack yeah. of all trades. Sounds like these are like. What is that? Um, that is, uh, I was getting a call from the sub, the sub commander. <laughs> he was just checking to make sure that everything was okay. okay. And wanting to schedule if we were going to be, uh, ready for our pickup at two. So we're good. <laughs> aye, aye, captain. One ping and one ping only. All right. So we've got a few of these folded. Oh, well, okay. Apparently that saying has changed a lot over time. Anyway. Ah, uh, okay. Curiosity killed the cat. Often used, a proverb often used to warn of the dangers of unnecessary investigation or experimentation. The original form of the proverb, now little used, was care killed the cat. In this instance, care was defined as worry or sorrow for others. Huh. Weird. That's interesting. Hmm. Earliest form printed reference. Uh, so the earliest form printed reference to the original proverb is attributed to the British playwright Ben Jonson in his 1598 play *Every Man in His Humor*, which was performed first by William Shakespeare. Helter skelter, hang sorrow, care will kill a cat, up tails all, and a pox on the hangman. Well, yeah, that's a little different than we're used to. Yeah. I thought that would be something that you'd be interested 
And then, yeah, if you could check the Jack of All Trades one and see if that one is... And that was one, actually, I'd heard the second part by Adam Savage. He'd, he'd mentioned it. And I dropped... That was Wikipedia, by the way. Okay. <laughs> For what it's worth. I dropped a tag. Let me try to find it before I find it with my foot. This is something from Quora. I don't know if and is this that is just accurate a, at all or not. Yeah, um, I think that's just a, we have a question and anybody can provide an answer. Yeah, it looks like it. Let's see. Yeah, what is the somebody asked? What is the origin of the phrase "jack of all trades, master of none"? And what does it mean? Somebody said, as part of their longer uh, answer, one of which uses like a story reference kind of anecdotal example, but. Um, the first part is, a master of a trade was trained by a master for a long time. A jack of all trades was someone who knew much about how to do... Um, wait. <laughs> a jack of all trades was someone who knew much about how to do things, but had not mastered any one trade. Masters, masters charged a lot of money. Jacks charged much less. The masters wanted you to know that jacks hadn't mastered their trade. I don't know. Um, let's try this one. Oh, here's a Wikipedia reference to it. All right. Grab another one of these. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, Randy, we've got these. Let me see if I can switch to a... <laughs> Origins in Elizabethan uh, English, the quasi new Latin term. I forget the pronunciation. I want to say Johannes Factotorum. <laughs> uh, Johnny Do All, Johnny Do It All, was sometimes used with the same negative connotation that jack of all trades sometimes has today johnny do it all oh, man <laughs> i hate that i've already have an llc because <laughs> otherwise it would have been johnny studio johnny do it all one of my favorite turns of phrases randy is ne'er do well <laughs> Kind of reminds me of that. Because I'm assuming do it all is hyphenated. This says the master of none element appears to have been added later. Oh, really? It made the statement less flattering to the person receiving. Here, I did find it with my foot, as promised. Ouch. Uh, that is all uh, it references. It doesn't say anything about a further huh. aspect to that one. What what did you say it was? It was uh, Adam said. I thought Adam said it was uh, jack of all trades, master of none, often better than master of one. It comes up as a search term, but when you click on the actual searches, it doesn't reference it.
Uh, there's some references to it, but I don't know the uh, yeah, the validity uh, of it. Of yeah, so take of a them. look at it. Maybe that wasn't part of the origin. I thought that was what I was heard, but it could have been hard with some of those, right? Mm -hmm. And especially like we were talking about, Randy. You know that language changes so much. Randy, can I get you to mute me while I uh, vacuum this? That I was using those styrofoam eggs, and they crystallize. Like you know what I mean? They, all the pieces fall off of them, and. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, let's get it. Let's go back. Yeah, I'm ready whenever. One second. Good to go. Computer, what time is it? It's, it's 107 p.m. 107 p.m. Uh, Randy, can you help me by taking a look at the mental health minute note? And what was the keyword for that one? I can't remember. I fell on black days. That's what it was. What do I do when I when I'm feeling down? Never mind. I just needed to ask the question. <laughs> um for the today's mental health minute, I was thinking about it. I was kind of feeling a little bit down before the start of the show today. Just kind of like, I think it's important when you uh, suffer from things like anxiety and depression to have an awareness of your, your state without obsessing over it, right? Because you don't want to, you can be anxious about being anxious and cause anxiousness. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's definitely part of the problem. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not trying to endorse that feedback loop, but, you know, especially I think with, uh, when I, when I get like depressed and things like that, you know, it's like, is this, am I just a little sad or is this something a little bit more? Is this something that maybe feels like it's chemical or is there something I need to address or, and I was just kind of feeling a little down. Um, and there's a song by Soundgarden and, uh, Chris Cornell, who is no longer with us, uh, had a song that said, I fell on black days and, um, I've been thinking about that. So sometimes that's kind of what I'll refer to when I kind of feel, feel that way. And, um, and I started thinking about that as, you know, something to talk about. And it was like, well, what, what do I talk about with that? And it's like, well, what, what, you know, what kind of things do I do when I feel this way? How do I try to be proactive? And one of the things is, is to, I guess kind of like what we were saying with the anxiety is the, to get out of my head is the first thing that I try to do. Right. I figure that's the, that's the, the first thing that I try to do when I'm in there is you obsess about things. And as we talked about kind of Chris had brought up to me about the data redundancy area, he says, when you keep accessing the hard drive, but you're not getting any more information, same spot on the hard drive, but you're not getting any new information and, uh, and breaking that cycle and, you know, trying to find something that you can do to get out of your head, whether it's, um, you know, things like this, you know, that's why we call this addition through, through distraction, the value of being distracted. Um, or, you know, it's, I, I think it's really good if you can, um, it seems like it's really good if you, if, if you can do something for somebody else, uh, when you're feeling, feeling bad about yourself, maybe you can try to focus that energy on somebody else and, and focus it there. I think that's why we talked about, you know, with like pets being such a positive thing, Randy, right? Cause it, it gives you a responsibility for some, somebody else and where you don't necessarily feel like you have the strength to get out of the bed for yourself. You know, you have the strength to get out of the bed, to to you know feed your dog and let them out right mm -hmm. and uh and you don't even think about it in that in that context you know because but so that I, it's, it wasn't what the name not, nothing big for today's mental health minute but um how about you is there when you feel like you're in that funk is there anything that you try to any go-to's that you have um podcasts are, are a real good one for me podcasts youtubes uh, it depends on the level of it, you know, but, um, any, any specific go-to, not really, uh, it depends how deep you're in too. Um, whatever works for you really, Do you you know, you... it could be watching TV. It could be, you know, maybe just, maybe you're not getting enough sleep and you just need to take a nap. Yeah, um, that's a, that's maybe a... you're not eating right and you need to yeah. you know, make sure that you're eating something, yeah. getting enough protein that's true or something, yeah. drinking enough water. Uh, it can be as simple as that potentially. Yep. That that is a good one, you know, because it's like I, I I do that as well, right? Where it's like, oh, have I eaten? Yeah. <laughs> have I eaten? 
have I taken my meds? Have I eaten? <laughs> How active have I been? You know, um, walking. I think walking can be a really good one. Walking and yeah. especially Get, getting out. Yeah. yeah. I find that if changing I changing your environment. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a good one. Yeah. Changing your environment, getting out, getting fresh air. Um, Bye, Shay. She, Bye, Shay. She, she feels like she always needs to leave right when we get to the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, Randy, do you have a, a feel good movie? Like this is like, a, like if I'm sick, I want to put this movie on or if I'm sad, I want to put this movie on or. Um, hold on a second. She said, don't forget to remind Randy to do a live closed or is it open caption? A what? I don't think I understood your question. Uh, Shay said, don't forget to remind Randy to do a live closed or is it open caption? I'm live. I don't know what that means. I'll, what do I'll, you mean, Shay? I will, uh, <laughs> if you could text me with more information, I will remind him to do that. Uh, let's see here. All right. So, Randy, I pulled out some of our, our, our uh, we've got our, our castle that we've been working on. You can see some of it. Oh, up here some of our castle pieces this is one that we had been painting up mm -hmm. here you nice. can see that blue and the brown kind of permeating through there randy mm -hmm. and, yeah, it's but, hard to tell it just looks like shadows and stuff yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah. you can see cool and then you'll see even less of it when we when we put the wash but it does help you know when you look at it from here you really don't see it right it just kind of looks like some variations mm -hmm. let me get close you can start to <laughs> see it so um oops sorry about that i'm going to be doing some more of that work here on some of these pieces here this is, uh, it's going to take us a long time to print that castle or paint that castle all right so we added some blues here so i'll go ahead and add some more blue on oh. those um Chris yeah so you don't close just... caption so she can read the stream not hear it at work at the it did that automatically oh okay yeah we'll we'll, we'll uh take a look at that um huh. give me a second i'll write that down actually there might be a setting on that i thought that it's enabled but it may only be enabled on the edited videos and not on the live stream huh because i i thought that i had seen it and um when i watched them back later it had it but maybe not yeah we'll check and see so i'll make a note of that thanks thanks for being such a good fan we look forward to having you in the studio if you hear this <laughs> and if you don't we still look forward to having you in the studio uh, let's see here all right so let me pull out a thing with some craft paint with something this large i'm going to use craft paint i'm not going to use anything too expensive uh, I want my my blues and my browns blue gray oh no i'm sure not going to use those grays where's my browns at chris was proud randy um one of his uh things from facebook got got put, picked up by like a meme factory on on internet <laughs> nice uh he said he'd heard somebody said that um that kiss the band kiss uh-huh is just ICP for boomers. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oops. Oh, my God, my Talked about I um. Yeah, so with the Cimmerillion though, Randy, I think that that's going to be a possibility for some some good stuff. You know what? That's what upside down looks like. Out of brown potentially. It's all right. And just a big brush here. And I'm just going to make sure that you can see when we do this that we're getting it deep into the crevices with this being beaded. That's just the only, only part that we're paying attention to. Um, and I think I'm only going to be applying this pattern on the beaded styrofoam. The brick pattern, this actually has three different patterns on it. If you take a look, 
So you've got this brick pattern here at the top. Mm -hmm. And you've got the bricks that we've added here. And then you've got this goose flushed sort of texture, cobblestone-y. Mm -hmm. So I think that I we want to visually separate those, right? So I think one of the ways that we'll do that is maybe try to do it with the under the under collars. So the greens and the blues and the browns, we'll use those on the cobblestones, but we'll use different color choices for some of the other bricks cool. to help separate them. Oh, let me. That. Uh, well, if that's the case, then that's my blue here. I'm going to the studio mode. Okay. Look where are we? I'm here on, I'll stay here on the M50. So let me grab a couple other pieces then. If that's the case, that was the thinking I, I think I had previously. Oh, let's see what we can. Oops. What's up, buddy? Um, And I think we're going to be revisiting our eye beasts here soon as well. Mm. Down there. Forward to getting those back into back on the table. Um, Can you take off the auto switch? Yeah. Is it still on? Um, apparently. No, it's not. Oh, uh, well. I'm Did you just switch something? Uh -uh. Huh. Like... I might have maybe knocked the camera and it moved a little bit, but. No, it like. The, it's, it's like the, the menu options and everything just changed. The sources list just changed on me while I was in the middle of dealing with it. I don't. Well, huh. that's weird. Weird. Did you just switch it to ceiling? I just did, yeah. But it didn't switch it on the. Are you in studio mode? Mm hmm. Maybe I accidentally bumped one of the buttons. Because the swap doesn't give me the timer thing. Um, anyways, I digress. Let me turn our light back on. I'm going to do a quick refresh on the M50. Anybody that's watching is wondering why we do that. It's because it will freeze after 30 minutes on purpose because they hate us. <laughs> they hate us because they taint us. I don't know why they taint us. But they taint us because they taint us. We do need to watch that again. That was really funny. <laughs> I was watching um, Robert Downey Jr. was on um, Joe Rogan here recently. And I was watching a couple of the clips from it. You're processing what I'm saying? Joe Rogan, yep. And uh, and he um, he was talking about Tropic Thunder. Uh-huh. You remember Tropic Thunder? Yeah. Now, that's a pretty outrageous movie, right? Mm hmm and, uh, and he was talking about it, and he plays a character, an actor who's blackface in it, right? Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's that never goes over well. It doesn't matter what your intentions are. Trying to do blackface is never has never worked. I don't know if you remember, um, who was the guy that was in ch uh, on Cheers? Which one? The guy that was the head bartender. Ted remember. Danson? Ted Danson. He, do you remember briefly when he dated Whoopi Goldberg? Oh, yeah. And do you remember when he went to a thing in blackface with her? No. <laughs> was not received well. A roast. I guess it was a roast of. Uh... I, I don't remember the, that. I don't remember it. There was a. Yeah, Ted Danson blackface performance at Whoopi Goldberg's uh, roast. Yeah. Do 
But it, what I, the reason I bring this up was his the way that he described it was that he had put a lot of thought into it, and that it seemed like his hearts are were absolutely in the right places about it. And you know, he's like, this was about the hypocrisy of some people and what they think is right, what they can justify, and you know. And uh, he said, Whoopi wasn't offended by it. <laughs> yeah. No, she thought. I think she thought it was funny. And that's what was funny about it. Um, but yeah, he said that. It's like he said his mom was like, "Oh, Bobby, I don't know if this is a good idea." <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, mom, I'm a little worried about it myself." <laughs> And he said, he said, he said, most of my black friends really thought it was good. Thought it was funny. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, what about the ones that didn't? <laughs> he, just, he just kind of shook his head. And... But yeah, and, and I, I really, I, I, you, you know, you kind of wonder about people, right? You know, and especially actors, because you see them that way. And it's like, if you can see, like, you see some actors and they're so good at being jerks, right? Yeah. And you're like. Are you, is this just because you're not acting? You know, it's easy for you because you're not really acting. Or, but uh, he seems like, and especially Robert Downey's had, you know, over the years, I mean, I would still remember him from Weird Science, right? Being the smart ass kid in Weird Science. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's gone through a lot of, ups and downs on his careers and his personal life and uh, I don't know he seems like a guy that's really um, very contemplative very contemplative gentleman and it seems that he has a has a real kindness to him which is awesome but and who is that? Robert Downey mm -hmm. has you know so about the blackface yeah a lot of it has to do with like the origins of yeah yeah absolutely yeah stuff. so yeah because like a lot of it i think was like like amos and andy right i think amos and andy was like a tv show or a radio show or well, both maybe they were talking about and you had people who were white that were portraying blacks in stereotypical fashion it, yeah extreme it was about extreme stereotypes and mocking um mimicking of enslaved african americans on southern plantations being uh, depicting them as lazy ignorant cowardly hypersexual uh this is according to um, an article on cnn.com that is referencing Smith smithsonian's national nah, if i could speak smithsonian's national museum of african american history and culture um they're intended the performances were intended to be funny to white audiences uh but to the black community they were demeaning and hurtful um, there's jim crow one of the most popular blackface characters performed by performer and playwright thomas dartmouth rice i remember when um that uh the video came out by uh, Charles Gambito, This Is America, and they said that he there was some Jim G Crow imagery that appeared to be intentional. In what? And and his video, he does he adopts mm. a pose that's a really weird pose that there's a a a common Jim Crow depiction. Kind of has his like an arm akimbo and a leg kind of kicked out, and then also they talked about like the clothes that he was wearing is actually a uniform in the Civil War. Like he has the pants on from the Civil War and um kind of interesting. That video is really interesting, very powerful. Alrighty. Uh we were talking about go to movies, Randy. Um I have a new one. When you're ready to process information, yeah, go ahead. Um, my new my new go-to movie is The Martian, based oh, yeah. on the book by Andy Weir, I think is his name. Um, but it's the Matt Damon movie. I love that movie, and I can watch I can watch it over and over and over and over. And yeah, now, are you just watching, watching, or having it in the background watching? Either well, I, if I'm watch, I use I don't no, I don't generally have it on the background, but 
Um, but it's like if I'm just like, if I need a movie and I want to get out of my head, I can go to it pretty much any time. Uh, also, Harry Potter, if I'm in a funk, Harry Potter movies. But I'm, I'm we're, we don't, we always say it's just a matter of what movie we're on, right? We're constantly watching Harry Potter. <laughs> it's like we just cycle through it, from start to finish, and start over again. And uh, Lord of the Rings, I'm still a big fan of the extended versions of the Lord of the Rings movies. Let's see here. A lot of times when I've seen a movie, no matter how much I like it, um, if I watch it again, it just ends up putting me to sleep. It, it ends up what? Putting me to sleep. Hmm. That can be good or bad. Yeah. Uh, like there's some movies that... You uh, know, it's usually like fitful sleep if I have a movie playing while I'm sleeping. Uh, <laughs> Computer, what time is it? The time is 1.27 p.m. 27, all right. We've got time to get some more of this painting done. Yeah, that one. Like Harry Potter, this Lord of the Rings. Those are my go-tos. I used to, I used to, one of my favorite feel-good movies used to be, um, I haven't watched it in a long time. I need to watch it again. Is uh, Searching for Bobby Fischer. I have not seen that. It's about this kid who's a child prodigy, and Bobby Fischer is a child prodigy, but it's not really about Bobby Fischer. It's about this other kid. Was he a chess prodigy? Yeah. Yeah. And um, and yeah, and it's just a neat, neat story. It's got Lawrence Fishburne in it. It's got Ben Kingsley, who plays his, his chess instructor, and then Lawrence Fishburne is a as like a, a street guy. Well, maybe he's not a street guy. Um, he's in the park. He, he sees him in the park, actually. And um, they play chess. He's like a kind of like a chess hustler, a street chess hustler. Uh-huh. They play they play speed chess in the park. They do like, you know, taunt, you know, you taunt people and stuff. I don't know, it's just it's neat. That's the theme of it, too. You haven't seen in a long time that I'd like to see again is uh, Sneakers. That's a movie I think that's mm. underrated, goes under the radar. I meant to watch that again. Pretty good. Got a great cast, right? <laughs> Robert Redford, Dan Aykroyd, <laughs> uh, Sydney Poitnier. Um, I can't remember what her name is. The the woman that was in Battlestar Galactic and stands with fists. <laughs> and uh, um. she's in it. Uh, River Phoenix was in it. Well, I guess if you uh, search for sneakers, it's not going to be the first thing that comes up. <laughs> sneakers movie, yeah. <laughs> there probably is a few other hits you're going to get on sneakers. Are you ta- oh, what, what what cast member were you talking about? Was that Nike or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Converse? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see here. Nineteen ninety-two. Ninety-two. Canadian caper. Randy, can I get a ceiling like cam, comedy? maybe? Uh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> I keep having to redo everything to this. Uh, there you go. Thank you. I'm not going to do this stuff during stream anymore. We're gonna have to, if we want something done, we're going to have to do it off stream. <laughs> yep. Agreed. We're learning, right? <laughs> we're figuring it out as we go along. Yeah, so Robert Redford, Dan Aykroyd, Ben Kingsley, Mary McDonald. Mary McDonald. Uh, River Phoenix, River Sydney Phoenix. Poitier, Poitier, and David Strathairn. Strat- 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 you ever seen Strat- To Sir With Love? I have not. That's a Sydney Poitier movie. Um, I think it's a horrible name for a movie. And there's also a song by Al Green, the immaculate Al Green, that's called To Sir With Love, and it's a great song. <laughs> But it's like, it's such a weird, weird, weird title. Uh, to Sir With Love is a 1967's British drama film that deals with social and racial issues of inner city schools. Yeah, he was, he plays a, a teacher. Which, you know, I think it's that movie that we've seen over and over again, right? It's Stand By Me, or it's not Stand By Me, it's, uh, they used to call me Crazy Joe, now they call me Batman, whatever that movie was. 
<laughs> Stand and Deliver. Oh. <laughs> I think it's called Stand and Deliver. You also had one that was um, a Latino version. Um, there was one that Michelle Pfeiffer did. There's one that uh, Hillary Swank did. You know, it's like every five years you get that movie, it seems like. <laughs> you know, I used to talk about, uh, you know, when I worked at the library, my favorite books to shelve. The the movie that uh, the Michelle Pfeiffer's was, was based on. And I think that was the one where Cooley, it was uh, Gangster Paradise actually came from. Um, computer, what movie was Gangster's Paradise from? According to an Amazon customer, Dangerous Minds. Dangerous Minds. Did that answer your question? Yep. Um, computer, was Michelle Pfeiffer in Dangerous Minds? Computer. Processing. Who starred in Dangerous Minds? I do lose Michelle Pfeiffer. Doesn't work. Yeah, she's... But that that the main character the the the, the book that that was based on you want to you want to take a guess as to what <laughs> the name of the book uh, I have no idea what yeah it I know it's sorry <laughs> uh, it was <laughs> my posse don't do homework huh <laughs> and all I could think of is there's a Sir Mixes Lock song that's my posse's on Broadway right my posse's on Broadway and so whenever I'd sell it I always say my posse don't do homework. <laughs> My posse don't do homework. <laughs> My posse don't do homework. Also, I used to have to show a book about uh, some diseases. Mm -hmm. And when you oop. worked at the library? Yeah, when I worked at the library. Not I, just on your own personal bookshelf. No, I don't. I don't have to. I mean, I do, but I don't have to. <laughs> Uh, I was required to do I used it. to make myself. So yeah. I mean, just, I about. That's another one of my favorite books, uh, Randy. Llamas for Love and Money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to be pimping out llamas, but apparently there's a book that helps you do it if you hey, want to. What sound does a llama make? <laughs> I'll tell you the sound it doesn't make. No. <laughs> uh, llamas spit, by the way. Oh, I didn't know they were spitters. <laughs> That's what uh, Sinead O'Connor is on MTV of, of saying. There's a clip of her saying, you know the difference between love and like. Swallow and spit. <laughs> oh, this is weird. It says llamas make a variety of sounds. The most common sound is a humming noise. The female will hum to her cria offspring. Males orgle, orgle, which sounds like a gurgle during breeding. <laughs> it's it's as the Homer Simpson when he's he's salivating. <laughs> Sixty four slices of American cheese. <laughs> is that a is that a orgle? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm hesitant to play any of these because I don't know what the sound's actually going to be or if it's just gonna be people talking. You know many like YouTube videos you can click on and it's not at all what it's Oh it yeah, is. yeah. Oh, and so I used to have to uh, shelf some books mm -hmm. to do all the diseases. Yeah. Um, um, and I was not familiar with the disease L-U-P-U-S. Lupus? Lupus. Yeah. It's and so, uh, common in, among African-American people, I believe. But it's a big problem in their community. Okay. Um, I wasn't familiar with it, and so I was I always always called it lupus. Lupus. <laughs> lupus. And I was, I always used to tell this guy I worked with, I was like, Lupus? It's like, that's, what is that? A goddamn breakfast cereal? <laughs> He's like, it's called Lupus. You tool. I don't know why you had to call me a tool. I mean, I was just. All right. Yeah, the big. The Big Book of Women Killers. That was one of my favorites. Actually, 
And it's sure. funny, there was this books that whenever I would shelf them, there was always a phrase that she would say with it because it would trigger something, and that's, you know, when my mind works. And I used to have to shelve In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, and there's a line by uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers where it says, Good man, true man, Capote. That always popped in my head every time I had to shelve that book. <laughs> Good man, true man, Capote. All right, so these got the blue. Let's go ahead and get the brown on these while they got them out. Uh, this is not turn you upside down. And what you looking up over there, Randalls? About the vandals that took the handles? Uh, uh, diseases. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, no, no, no. That's not that's and then I think I always thought that it. Does it have a lupine root in the word? Uh, lupus is uh, very lupine zoning, um, which would be wolf. So, so is, I don't know what what are the symptoms of lupus. Do, 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 do. Hold on, I, I switched to because I was like when I said it was most common among African Americans. I thought I was afraid that I was. Uh, what do you think about sickle cell? Confusing it with something else like sickle cell. Okay. Um, but it does say that it is lupus is two to three times more prevalent among women of color, African Americans, Hispanic, Latinos, uh, Asians, Native Americans, Alaska Natives, Native Hawaiians, and or Pacific Islanders. Uh, is it a genetic then among thing? Caucasian women? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, this is according to lupus.org. Um, hmm. And what was your question? What are uh, the symptoms? There, yeah. Of lupus, I mean, because I think in my mind it was like you—you you were like a werewolf. You became a werewolf or something. <laughs> that is lycanthropy. <laughs> yes, that is lycanthropy. It doesn't exist. There we go. I'm a misanthrope, uh, not a lycanthrope. You know, do we want to give the symptoms of this? Because are people going to be like, "Oh my god, I got that! I got that! <laughs> oh my gosh, I have lupus." <laughs> Randy, can I ask you a question? <laughs> I'm sorry, and I, I need you to repeat that because I wasn't listening because I was thinking of my own joke. I said, um, I said, do we want to uh, do we want to list the symptoms? Because <laughs> what if people are like, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah, gosh, yeah, I have that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Wolfman Jack is thinking that he's he's got lupus. <laughs> I think he has fruit lupus. Yes, uh, lycanthropy is not one of the symptoms of. Lupus. Yes. <laughs> um, so we can uh, say that. <laughs> I, I, I said I'm 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 not a lycanthrope. I'm a misanthrope. <laughs> um, so I guess that would make me an unlycanthrope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I like that one. I'm sorry you did. What what is the uh, is it lycanthropy when they or just have like excessive facial hair and stuff? Oh, like true lycanthropy. Yeah, like, yeah. True lycanthropy. Right. I think that it it, it yeah. No, lycanthropy is specifically, well, this is saying lycanthropy is specifically the, the supernatural. The supernatural werewolf. definition. Uh, hold on, clinical lycanthropy. Oh, that's a rare psychiatric syndrome. Delusion. Uh, yeah, because like I'm thinking like Jojo the dog face boy. think that you can transform into an animal. Oh, yeah, there is psychological lycanthropy where people think yeah. that they're, where they think that they're, and just that they just need to shave. <laughs> It was saying that they can, they think that they can transform into an animal. Oh, okay. Animagus um, style. <laughs> what is, let's see. Let's see this. Oh, right. Okay. Let's see this one. So I'm kind of just going with the camo type of pattern here, some stripes. I want to leave some of the black, have some blue, and have some brown, because I'm kind of just trying to give a third of each. It's kind of not well, overthinking it. There's hirsutism. What's that? Excessive. Oh, uh, hirsut? Yeah. Which should be... Hirsutism. Hirsutism. Isn't it funny that hirsut is so, so close to hirsut? A suit of hair? <laughs> um, hmm. uh, look up Jojo the dog face boy he was a freak from the um, 
and I made that in the best way possible, um, from the Barnum and Bailey's classic freak show, and see what it was that they think that he suffered from. Hmm. Can you find Jojo the dog face boy? Yeah, Fedor Jeff Tiju <laughs> or something like that. Fedor Adrianovic, uh, Adrianovic Jeff Tiju, something like that. Okay. Uh, this is a famous Russian blah 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 sideshow performer who was brought to the United States of America in 1884 by. P.T. Barnum. I don't know if you still can. They have a really neat in Florida a, a P.T. Barnum museum. And it was also like his house. He had an amazing house. And he had like a, recre a recreation of like a Greek garden in the back. It was oh, like wow. really cool. That uh, overlooked like the, the, the ocean. But they, I remember that, like the freak show banners that they had there. They remember they had one of Jojo the dog face boy, and it always stuck with me. Uh, werewolf syndrome redirects here. It is not a not to be confused with clinical lycanthropy, as we just determined. Nice. Uh, hypertrichosis or hypertrichosis is an abnormal amount of hair growth over the body. Two distinct types of hypertrichosis are generalized hypertrichosis, which occurs over the entire body, and localized hypertrichosis, which is Safe. restricted to a certain area. Ah. Can be. Was he hairy all over or just his face? It can be congenital, present at birth, or acquired later in life. Huh. Man, that would suck. So that's. Um, I think that was a lot of why people were saying. what, Like how. Lycanthropy, the idea of werewolf, werewolfism uh, started, is because it would happen to people later in life. Like all of a sudden, they would become very hairy. It's called like, puberty, Randy. Yeah, it very much like um, for some people, it was uh, it started during puberty. Well, it's funny too. Like you know, like it's un it's not uncommon for men like they start to lose hair in certain places and get it in others. Yeah, generally in life. What's that? As you get older. Yeah. It's, that's always strand that's so bizarre. Like, why would you lose hair on your head and then like just but you need it on your everywhere back. else? That's so weird. Yeah, you no longer need it on your hair head. You know where you need it? Your back. <laughs> oh, you also know would be a good place for it? Your ears <laughs> coming out your ears. Um, okay, nose. <laughs> How about that? Need some extra nose hairs? I guess. Would hurt, right? Computer, what time is it? The time is 1.44 p.m. 1.44 p.m. Good. I still got some more time to continue doing some painting and talking about werewolves. Randy, they're werewolves, not swearwolves. <laughs> so watch the language. Swerve with Get the swear along. Remember um, uh, what they did in the shadows? So look, can you see this? There's an old... Like uh -huh. This is from an old manuscript or something. Uh -huh. Um... And it shows... That's my favorite chapter of the Canterbury Tales. <laughs> it looks like it could be. Not true. Um, the, like the original script. <laughs> <laughs> it shows a, a person who has... Uh, what Jojo has? Has that issue, yeah. And, and so it looks like his entire head. Like he does look like... Chewbacca. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it looks um, like Chewbacca. Like his entire face and, or and Chaka, head are very um, hairy. Or Land of the Lost or... Um, Yep. Um, and it, was it only his his head though? Did it oh, say? the uh, hold on. Oh, Jojo, I was curious. I'm fascinated about Jojo. Speaking of freak shows, Randy, mm -hmm. uh, X Files. There, do you remember the the one that had the jigsaw man, the guy that was tattooed with the jigsaw puzzle? 
Uh, what about it? Th- in that episode, when they're working on whatever that is, in Florida, there's a a trailer park, and it's all freak show people. And it's because they travel around, and so they all stay at the same you, uh, trailer park. Yeah, what are you talking about, though? Uh, X-Files? I missed the... Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Uh, yeah, the conundrum, human conundrum or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that... Yeah, that might have been it. And um, there's a scene where there's a guy... Um, do you remember in the movie Ghost, the, the the ghost that teaches Patrick Swayze how to be able to touch the living? Yeah. So he's in that episode, right? And he's a freak, I think, that has um, a congenital twin sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like you had a twin and it died, but it, it got absorbed into your body sort of thing. Yeah. And so uh, Scully is, is knocks on his... Knocks on his um, on his trailer door, right? Yeah. And it opens up, and he, he has a robe on, right? And the robe kind of slips over, and she can see his 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 congenital twin. That and she's staring at it, and then she looks, and she notices that her robe has fallen open a little bit, and he's kind of staring at her cleavage. And then they kind of both look at each other and move on. And I thought it was a really neat little scene to put into the show. It was I thought it was very powerful. Subway goes Vincent uh oh, okay. Triavelli. Vincent Triavelli. That's who that actor is. As Subway Ghost. Yep. Yeah, because that's right in the subway he teaches them how to. But yeah, that episode, I just thought that was really neat. It was you know. Cause they, they when both of them realize what the other person's doing, they both cover themselves up. At the same time, this is kind of interesting. All right, do I need any more brown? I need a little bit of brown on this side. Okay, my bottle on the floor. Oh. Randy, do you have any any exciting plans for the weekend? Uh, work. Oh, Yay. I'm sorry. So that would be no. <laughs> We're having unseasonably. Well, I guess I don't know, it probably is seasonably. It's probably right on season, actually. The weather is nuts right now. Man, it's just, it's like 15 and then it's 45. I know some of the people with sinus issues, it's really causing some problems. Carrie's suffering some really massive headaches, I think, because of it. This is usually, Randy, where you say, no, JB, this is just you. It's just you. Human enigma. The human enigma? Yeah. This guy. Can, um, do, can you see that? Yep. Yeah. He's got the yeah. Uh, yeah, puzzle, jigsaw tattoos, and looks like he's got some uh, horns implanted under his skin on his forehead. Yeah. And I don't know whether he did at that time or not. That might be since then. You know the, the thing that always. You've seen the like human lizard dude or whatever? I can't remember what he calls but what he's called that's a human what no another good another great word randy uh-huh bifurcated hmm that is a good word yeah just like this guy Lizard is he bifurcated? Man. his tongue is bifurcated and he sharpens his teeth as well oh okay yeah Yep. Uh, see, his his eyebrow ridges. Yeah. Got, yeah. Yep. 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 This yep. is not the one. There's another guy, I think, that's like has. Uh, so if you just search for lizard man, like horns and stuff, I think this. he must be like a dragon guy or something. I don't know. I've, I've seen, seen I've seen a cat man. person too. Hmm. Yep. If yeah, if you look up the cat man, he has uh, whiskers. Yeah, and he's got. I think he's got like the puffiness, so he looks like he's. Yeah. Looks like he's in the uh, the play nice. for the musical Cats. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Meow, 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 meow. Yeah, he's got fangs, and I wonder if those... Oh. Yeah, he actually split his lip to make it look more like a cat mouth. You really gotta want it, man. Yeah. You really gotta want it. And his nose has been... augmented. Yeah, wow, he did a lot. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know. 
I think that there's a, a line, Randy. I'm trying to examine this. I've been thinking about it. We all have this need to be unique, I think, right? Hmm. There's like a part of us that wants to be unique. It's weird because it like fights with the part that wants, wants to be to a part of the... <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And there's times when people do things to be unique that, man, it just like grates on me. Right. <laughs> and I'm just like, and I, I think I think less of the person because of it. But then there's other people who do it. And it's like, oh, look at you for being an individual, <laughs> you know. And uh, I'm not sure that it's consistent. And so that's something I've been examining about. What is that? What is the healthy balance of of individual expression? And 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 a uh, disproportionate need for attention, sort of thing, right? Oh, this says that Disney based their visual conception of the Beast for the film Beauty and the Beast on um, on Jeff him? the Shoe, <laughs> Fedora, the huh. Jojo the Dog Face Boy. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what this says. This is Wikipedia. Oh, it is. It's uh, in popular culture, basically the trivia section. Uh, I'm not seeing a reference to, uh, I could be missing it. There's a lot here. Um, yeah. To exactly uh, whether it was just his face or whether it was. Oh, okay. Uh, all over. You had to pay extra for that information. <laughs> if the shag carpet matches the sag drapes. Come on, Randy. Process that. There you go. Uh, I'm not seeing any pictures of him with like his shirt off or anything, so oh. I would imagine that. Do you have any with his pants off? Probably just his face, unless that was too risque during the times. But I imagine if there are pictures like that, that they are out there somewhere. Jojo the dog face boy. Computer, what time is it? Don't have my watch on, that's why I keep asking. It is 154. 154. Oof. Alright. I think this will be the last piece that we work on for today. I'll continue to work on this. I want to remind everybody to check out the, the links that we have in our, our description. Um, we've got our Patreon page up. I don't think we really talked about that today, but it's links in there. Um, we have some interesting uh, rewards. Uh, particularly that deal with minis that are limited tiers. So please, you can check that out. You can check out the Quasi Shop. We've got our Rollbox video, which we just did, that's posted up. That's been getting a couple of views, which is nice. Um, we post daily on Instagram. I've got pictures from last night's D&D session that's up there right now. Looked like they were starting to get a couple likes before then. It's been a real fun session. And Randy, actually, I think that's the next set of edited videos is going to be the uh, kind of examining our D&D sessions, the boards that we, we make. We try to do some, you know, kind of detailed boards using the stuff that we make here in the shop. And, um, and so we're going to be doing a deep dive of, of those. So I'm excited about that. Nice. And I'm also a little frightened of it. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you. Editing is the... Is, is the hard part. I'm trying to uh, convince uh, somebody else to help me with it. I was talking to Shay because uh -huh. she's interested in maybe doing some content creator type of work. Uh -huh. um, and I was trying to convince her to maybe come over and learn a little bit. I do like it. I do like editing. It's just, it's time consuming. And it's kind of, it's nice doing it this way because I can't be as precious as, as you and I both would tend to want to be about it. You know, it's like some things you just have to let go, right? Because otherwise you'll never finish editing the video. Right. It's like, I said that word wrong. Oh, well. <laughs> and there was something I said and it was just really stupid. And I was like, I want to change that because I sound stupid. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm leaving it. <laughs> I'm not going to just re-record just for that one fix you know i think i said something like i decided to come back another day when i could be doing this smarter and stuff or you know, something like 
And I was talking about wanting to do something smarter, and I, I think I used like horrific grammar. <laughs> I guess it's time to go get my breakfast. A lot of people do captions over it. I, so I ended up, like I ended up on um, one of them where I said foam instead of felt, you know, and I, I mm -hmm. did that because uh, yeah, it just makes more sense to. And then like the other thing too is like I had two separate recordings and they don't match up and you can tell some in a couple places where I edited in from a different time. It's like it's just it's what it is. What it is. But I um I am glad that that beast has been finally been put to bed though. That was bothering me. Not having it resolved. Not having that video finished. But anyway, so we have that video that's up there. Uh, we have the quasi shop which has links to stuff. There were some new things. We put those doors and the scarecrows up for sale. That's on there. And then as well as the, the roll boxes that are mentioned in that video are available on the quasishop.com as well. Let's see here. A little bit over here, maybe. Um, yep. Went to Facebook and all that good stuff. And then uh, remind everybody that we do do this twice a week. If you stayed this late, I'm sure you probably know that. We're looking forward to having some guests coming into the studio here. John's going to be coming in on Sunday, our buddy John. And that will probably be a recorded thing that we do. Maybe like a session zero or something like that kind of idea. Uh, let's see here. These sides. Yeah, I do. Um... And then Shay will be in on Tuesday, so we'll look forward to that. Randy, I mm -hmm. love you and I appreciate Sorry? you. Oh. I, I love you and I appreciate oh, you. I love you too, bro. Mucho gusto. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Doesn't that mean like very much or something? What's that? Mucho gusto. What's gusto? Uh, like. Me like. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Much like. <laughs> Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. <laughs> I like go. that a lot. <laughs> I used to like to say yo tango frio. <laughs> Fritos. <laughs> yo tango frito. That means I am cold. Well, they say I have cold, right? <laughs> tango is like to have. I have cold. I like that. <laughs> yo tango frio. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and then, Randy, I think that this that Sorry. might actually conclude it for today's see. session. Unless there's anything else that you think that we need to to mention, if you had any parting thoughts that you wanted to leave upon our fair listeners. Um, yeah, if anybody knows how to get stuff to work more easily in Streamlabs OBS, let me know. <laughs> yeah, please, uh, feel free to pass on any what information. What is the quickest way to get images, quickest and easiest way to get images up and going? All right. Uh, no, I don't think... Uh, what is the problem I, I that mean, you're having? Like, we were we were throwing them into a directory, and if you throw them into the directory, well, every time you change so the picture, stuff, does it want to resize like I'm it? I'm trying or? to do that, and I'm trying to... And then you have to... Yeah, you have to resize it. You have to make sure it's flipped right. You have to get a... If you want to frame on it, you got to do that. If you want to yeah. get in that. And then trying to do that and deal with uh, the different camera angle switches at the same time. So i got to have studio mode on to be able to do that. And then if I'm and looking something up for you at the same time... Right. It's a lot at the same time. Yeah, and then when you're in to, studio mode, I can't switch camera And I'm listening to the audio 30-second delay in my ear. And, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just trying to I was just trying to give a little framing to if somebody did actually have some information. That's fine, Randy. That, that's not critical. You can leave it where it's play it where it lays. Um let's see here. That's that. So yep. All right. Yeah, so hey, anybody just the has... wondering of like, am I just doing this wrong? Like, is there a better way to do this? And I'm just Yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, over the weekend. It's kind of hard because, especially when I have D and D in between the two streams, I don't get a lot of opportunity to yeah. to look at it. But over the weekend, maybe I can try to uh, see because I do enjoy it, and it would be really nice to make this in a way that's going to be fully functional for you as well. So, I think, uh, and the wondering of like, well, I'm still trying to work on this thing, but it was mentioned 45 minutes ago, so is it still relevant? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, show notes. Burr, 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 burr. You didn't have the one thing you mentioned uh, highlighted, actually. You have some other stuff. Let's see, about Conan. Um, stuff we've already mentioned. Oh, I had that highlighted? I meant to delete that. No, I, I think we, we got through all that. The Kickstarter stuff yeah, we got through. Third. Um, I do want to, like um, Randy, on one of our, our uh, other sessions, I do want to um, to talk about Alan Watts some more. We know we had previously talked about him. Yeah, I never got around to actually listening to any of his stuff. I started to, um, uh, but never progressed any further with it. Have you been continuing to listen to him? Then? There, yeah, I've listened to a couple more of his. I was driving somewhere, and mm-hmm. uh, this might have been when I had a family member who was in the hospital. I put some YouTube videos on, right? And they were, they were longer. Yeah. So it's like him talking. It's like 25, 30 minutes. So, and um, he counted himself as a, and I, so, so I, I've started now it's like trying to watch some things like, who is this guy, right? Yes. And reading about him. And apparently he was a guy who um, was famous. He was British. He was famous for bringing Zen philosophies to contemporary thinking. So Eastern thought into Western thought. Uh-huh. He had a lot of books about Zen um, okay. that, that were uh, popular. And, but he counted himself, he said, as a spiritual entertainer. He had a lot of critics because he wasn't a, a, like a pure Zen Buddhist. And, but he, it seemed that on the surface, it seems that he kind of combined psychotherapy thinking like Jungian thought with some of the Zen philosophy. And, uh, so I'm interested in, mm-hmm. and, uh, finding out more. I was just glad that he wasn't responsible for like, a, you know, he wasn't part of a suicide cult or something. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was going to be afraid of. Yeah. That's what, uh, and that's why we really, that. we kept disclaimers. Like, I don't know who this guy is. Exactly. So I don't know if he got people to drink Kool-Aid <laughs> or not. Um, I'm not saying, but he did have some, he has and some like interesting came ideas from, that's all I knew. Like it came from like some other search I was doing. Yeah. It showed up as uh, like on the sidebar yeah. and I was like, what's this guy? This yeah. looks like an interesting picture. <laughs> yeah. And he has, yeah, he had and, interesting, some interest because the same thing. He kept popping up on mine. Yeah. I think it, he started popping up after I had uh, watched some Jim Carrey things. You know, we talked about that Jim Carrey thing where he talks about love and fear mm. and you know, in your action, you know, you can meet it with love or you can meet it with fear. And the moments of crisis, I've been finding it interesting that, like, if I'm feeling a lot of anxiety, it's like, well, how am I acting? Am I acting out of love or am I acting out of fear? But when I started doing that, and it's kind of more existential thinking, mm-hmm. and that's a lot of what his stuff is, you know, it's kind of this existential thinking, and, and I'm, I'm finding it interesting. Um, so I look forward to uh, to doing some more uh, on that and, and uh, further chatting you up about that. So if you do get an opportunity to check out maybe at least one of his things before the next session, that'd be fun. Okay. If, if you if the opportunity arises, um, and yeah, and then I think that we'll, we're going to be continuing to work on our castle. I've got the spell effects that I want to do. We're going to continue to be working on our egg. Uh, we want to bring back our eye beasts that we've been working on and finish these guys up so that we can get them on the shop. Um, so that's these are fun. I'm looking forward to them. And then I want to probably have, as soon as we finish these, I probably want to do more, but because these are these are a lot of fun. These are a ton of fun to make. I, I want to do more stuff, I think, like this. A lot more stuff like this. Um, yep, so I think that's what we got going on for next week. Um, unless there's anything else, Randy, that you have that you want to share with any of our good listeners? Uh, I think I'm good for the moment. I'm going over to you. I'm going to give you a, a squeeze on the shoulders, a pat <laughs> on the back, and a little head scratch. Ah. Yeah. Which way is out of place? Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, no, the uh, static electricity. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it is funny. I'm like my own Van de Graaff generator I, now. Thanks. I rustled your hair, and I could tell that you were like, just wait until I turn away so you ran your fingers through it. <laughs> like you just did right now. Well, it just feels weird. It's all like... <laughs> Anyways. Um, Sticking up. <laughs> so if there's nothing else, we'll leave everybody with the doctor's promise, which are words that we feel are good to live by. Never cowardly never cruel, never give up, and never give in. Thanks, everybody, for your time and your attention today. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.